On today's episode, I share how nature and other than human beings can create safety in our bodies when accessing human relationships don't feel safe. Welcome to the Holistic Life Navigation Podcast. I am your host, Luis Mujica. I was sick and depressed until I discovered that I could make music, and then my whole life transformed because I began learning how to listen more deeply, listen to life, to the people around me, and to my body. And that's when I realized that the body speaks through sensations, and learning this new language meant relearning my body and mind. I soon healed myself of many chronic conditions and then began teaching others how to do so as well. Holistic Life Navigation combines nutrition, self-inquiry, and somatic experiencing to help you release stress and trauma just by listening to your own body. This podcast serves as a place to share my experiences as well as the experiences of many others who have healed and are healing through unique, unorthodox, and unusual ways. Your time to learn begins now. On today's episode, I'm going to be reading from a journal entry of mine about a moment I had recently in the forest that was very psychedelic and magical. A bird of prey ran into my sex this morning. Last week, I visited Puerto Rico for the first time. Up until then, it was only a myth to me. I could smell it through my grandma's cooking. I could feel it when I hugged my abuelo, and I saw its landscapes in his silhouette as I watched him die recently. The moment I touched the ground, I felt like I had come home, and I've been a bit homesick ever since for the land, the language, the way of that culture. When I awoke this morning, I stretched, listening to Tori Amos's Under the Pink, and decided to connect to the land in upstate New York again. That record in particular holds a castle of memories for me when I was 16, and when I was getting in touch with the parts of myself that I had pushed aside for most of my life. I walked my favorite trail in the forest, and I noticed I was attuning to a song of hers in my mind. It's called Weatherman. I noticed how I was missing the land's song for this mind song. The rushing creek, the songbirds, the shriek of the hawks, and the smell of the musty forest floor was moving past me like a conveyor belt. I could see it, I could hear it, but I wasn't quite feeling it, I wasn't quite touching it or experiencing it. I paused and breathed and shifted from my mind to the song of the land, and I was gifted an immense sensation. The shriek of the hawk merged with my sexual organs, and then the sound of the creek rushed up through my core, and my skin became alive with receptors for the shadows and light that were painting me under the forest canopy. My body had become a flower of some kind, unfurling layer after layer with sensation in relationship with the smells and sonic textures of the land. It was psychedelic, It wasn't out of body, it was so in body. And it was magnificent. My body stopped walking suddenly and I didn't know why. I looked and a few feet in front of me was the giant hawk. We looked at one another, then it flew gracefully through the trees and I was left with this giddy gratitude from connection. This physical body tricks me into feeling separate, but this nervous system is pure magic. It can stretch through walls, through tree roots, and even through time. I practice trauma healing and body listening, not to master my body, not to master my thoughts or even my life, but to be humbled from these incredible experiences. To be humbled by allowing life to merge with me. Experiences like this slowly help me dissolve the constructs from a human supremacy world, a a world centered around serving the human race. We can so quickly forget how much we're just one little piece of bacteria that's part of the fabric of this whole incredible 
a mysterious universe. And it, it really makes me think about the accessibility to healing that is very easy to forget we have. Much of our healing, much of our, our work around feeling validated, much of our desires of connection are usually based and um, oriented toward other humans. I want them to think I'm beautiful. I want them to say sorry. I want someone to love me. It's so easy to focus on humans as the source of that safety because our world is so human-centered. Yet experiences like this bring me back to when I was 13. I was raised in a Catholic family and I attended private Catholic school in grade school and then I left and then I went back in middle school. And right around the age of 13, I don't know what happened. It was a few years after the craft was released. And I remember just feeling a draw toward Wicca. And looking back on it, I realized I was being drawn to my indigenous Celtic roots. And so I found this book from Scott Cunningham that was about like an introduction to Wicca, essentially, or a, a, a beginner's guide, I think it was called. And the book completely changed my life because for those of you who don't know, I was born into an ambiguous body where my body made lots of extra estrogen. And so I, I matured in certain ways like a woman. And I also matured in certain ways like a man. And so I had these, these two kind of competing sex hormones and I developed breasts and hips. I was very tender. I was very soft. I couldn't develop muscle tone. My, my emotions were so much more uh, different than my male peers and my mind and the way I saw the world was so different from this, this biological ambiguity I was born into. And so I, the binary world of, of right and wrong, of male and female, of straight or gay, like all these things, they didn't make sense to me. Uh, I just couldn't wrap my mind around them. Maybe because my cells and my body just weren't built that way. I don't know. But the constructs of one or the other, just I never believed them, let's say. And so at 13, when I discovered this book, it was the first time I saw gods and goddesses and deities. Because all the Catholic you know, disciples uh, are just um, white men with beards. You know, very much how I look now. I didn't look like that, like that growing up, but it was interesting because when I when I would see them growing up, that was the idea of of divinity. That was the idea of heaven. That was the idea of righteousness, and I didn't identify with them. I I you know I came from a mixed family. I was bisexual. I had this weird ambiguity in my body, and so it, it always felt um, a bit isolating. And I always felt very uh, alone. And then when I saw this book of Wicca. And I saw these deities and I saw these androgynous hermaphroditic forces and creatures. I finally saw something that looked like me. And it opened my entire body and mind up to a whole other realm of possibilities of what connection looks like, of what relationship looks like. And it invited me and introduced me to animism, the lifestyle, the understanding, the practice, the awareness that everything has a spirit, everything has uh, a purpose, everything is connected and in service to the other. If you want to take this work deeper into your lives, I strongly recommend joining my next six week course. It begins on Monday, July 25th. There are three sessions every week for six weeks and they're all live. Everyone gets a replay and you learn how to heal stress and trauma through nutrition, herbalism, somatic experiencing, and self-inquiry. We meet three times a week for the six weeks, all the meetings are live, and everyone gets a replay. So even if you can't make it live, you'll still be able to watch and review. You'll have support Monday through Friday from me and my staff as you navigate the emotions and physical sensations that come up through this work. You'll even have options for one-on-one -on -one support. And we have a global community of students participating in this who will also be supporting you on our private online space called Circle. 
For more information on this course, visit holisticlifenavigation.com. Registration opens on June 30th, and make sure to register for the free Q&A session on that day so you can learn about this work and have some of your questions answered. We'll see you then. And so it, it was a pretty big breakthrough for me, and I was, I was too young to fully intellectualize it, but I felt it. And I remember walking in my backyard and going to this old tree, this giant old oak tree, and putting my hand up to its bark and feeling its ridges and feeling its scars and its bulbous kind of tumor-like growths coming out of it. And at the time, again, I had cystic acne. I had these breasts I was hiding because I had been sexually harassed and assaulted for having breasts. I was, um, you know, a, a chubby kid, you could say. I was a little overweight, the doctors would say. I had asthma. I had a lot of, like, body issues and limits and pains and and deviations of the standard uh, American male, you could say. So when I was looking at this tree and touching its body, I felt parts of my body. I felt my erupting acne in this tumor-like, you know, bulbous growth erupting from the tree. I felt um, the, the, the androgyny of not really quite male or quite female structure. I also felt this wild, authentic nature of it's just existing. It's not uh, constructing an idea about itself. It's just unfurling and offering itself to the world. And there was such a beautiful state of um, bravery. Is that the right word? Bravery doesn't feel right. Authentic doesn't feel right either. I'm just going to call it na nature. There was something so natural about it. And... At that point, it planted a seed in my body that I wanted to get in touch with my nature. Now, it would take me a while to do that, but I, I'm proud of myself that at 13, I made that promise and I stuck to it. And I'm still unfurling, you know, 21 years later, still, still unfurling. Uh, and that moment of understanding that I could connect and relate and even experience sexual energy with other than human forces uh, has changed my life ever since. And most cultures around the world follow this. They live by these you know, laws of nature, if you will, that we're all connected and we're all equal and we all have um, spirits and purposes and emotions and ways of relating. Uh, it's, it's a relatively new concept, you know, from the colonized cultures of thinking that the standard is the human and the supreme one is the human and everything here is to serve the human. And we see that through this terminology shift from a relative into a resource. If you speak with an indigenous person or someone that practices um, animism with the land, you'll see them or hear them refer to the grass in the backyard as, you know, the mother mother stalk, or person, or, oh, my friend, the rattlesnake, right? There's this relationship happening. In the colonized world, we call it a resource. These things have gone from having, even me saying things, you know, these beings have gone from um, actually helping us breathe and, and, and being part of our, our emotional states and our mental health and our well-being They've gone from these living relational beings into just resources that we build things out of and make money off of. Um, they become inventory. And the moment we reduce a tree to a resource or an inventory, we lose our relationship to it. We lose our own emotional sacred connection. And by losing that, there's no need to um, relate to them or communicate with them. They can be cut down because we need the resources. So it's been an interesting road. And now as a trauma therapist, I find that our disconnection to the natural world uh, is one of our greatest cultural traumas. Because when I think of culture, I really think of how we imitate the land around us and how the land around us finds its way into our bodies and lives. The colors we paint with come from the rocks and soils and flowers and herbs of the land. The food 
we make comes from the fruits of the land that grow outside our doors. The way we dance and sing, even the words we come up with, come from the sounds the land makes around us. The spices are the spices of the land around us. So when we think of culture, or when I think of culture, I really think of the land, what the land has offered us and our dance and relationship with the land becomes our culture. In a more modern sense, culture is more about maybe art and music and popular culture and style and clothing. And even that you can see, you can look at an urban area and you can look at the land, how the rocks have been pulverized into brick buildings and factories and how that changes the psyche and spirits of the people around them and the music that comes from that. So it's still an ongoing relationship to the land, even though it's become maybe contrived rather than just the natural uh, unspoiled world, if you will. And I, I, f I just find it an important thing to settle into because via colonization, especially through immigration and Americanization, we lose the roots of our cultural origins. And by losing those roots, we lose the thousands of years of relationships that our ancestors created with the land around them the way they spoke to trees, the dances, the equinox, the solstice, the times of the wheel of the year based on where the sun was or what was sprouting when something was celebrated, the way we healed ourselves and stayed in balance to not get illnesses and chronic disease because of our relationship to the earth around us. So it's a cultural trauma that we hold and we live from without even identifying or knowing it, that sense of disconnect and then we project it onto each other. We think, well, we're disconnected because this person won't love me or this person won't talk to me. Maybe. And what if we were to connect with other than human worlds? What would it be like to speak to your forest, to sing to the water, to let the water in the shower roll over your body in a sensual experience as if it was a person? It might sound strange to some of you. It might sound like home to others. For me, I shared my journal entry because... That experience reminds me of the magic of the nervous system. These physical bodies, you know, like I'm hitting my hands together, they, they, they hit, they have boundaries, right? The physical space has boundaries. We run into things. We stub our toes on corners. We do that because it's physical. Yet the nervous system has this amazing magical energy where it conducts through us. We're able to feel things and not be limited physically. And the trick around being traumatized is we're so overwhelmed. I don't know if it's the trick, but what happens when we're traumatized, we're so overwhelmed with charge and electricity that to feel any kind of connection or be receptive even of support can be overwhelming. That rush that happened through my body when I connected to the land as I was walking, that rush was so temporarily overwhelming, it felt like it was going to kill me. It was so big. And that's usually why we need facilitation through um, medicines like mushrooms and ayahuasca and such, because they force parts of us open that our psyches and egos would normally restrict and defend against. Yet it lights me up to try to access that soberly without any assistance to show my body it's safe to feel that much life force, to feel that connected is actually safe, even if it's a lot, and to build my capacity for it. But I, I want to close with just this, you know, piece that I'm contemplating as I, as I speak in this episode, that these nervous systems, because they conduct, because they're not of the physical world fully, right, they're physical nerves, but that conduction goes into the ether, goes into a different atmosphere. When we have trauma, the body doesn't trust that. It doesn't trust reception. It doesn't trust touching into other systems. So like I was walking and listening to that song in my mind and it was keeping me from feeling what was around me, we live that way often out of a very um, sophisticated and understandable defense mechanism to not feel too much because it, it feels scary to take it in, to feel. And I just want to remind you all, as I remind myself, taking little steps to show your body that it's safe to feel, especially in the other than human world, is a really great start for a lot of us to have relational trauma. When society and groups of people and individuals have been the source of a lot of our pain and abuse and, and trauma, 
it's not as easy to go to other humans and find that solace. We have too much trauma and pain overcoupled with humans. However, you can touch the soil, you can listen to a bird sing, you can look at a tree, you can lay in a body of water. There are so many beings in the natural world that we don't overcouple with threat that we're able to connect to and practice building the capacity for reception of support and for relatability and feeling what it's like to have a relationship to someone like a tree that won't hurt you the same way a person might. That's how I started my journey into trusting people again after being so brutally hurt by so many people, people I loved, people I trusted, people I didn't know. I was hated for so long for being a, an ambiguous person, a gender, sexual, ambiguous person. And reconnecting to the natural world taught me how to open up again. And then I was able to practice that with people when I felt ready. So I hope this episode brings you um, something that you needed to hear today. And I feel so grateful to have a, a way to just share my thoughts that are mine. <laughs> they're not facts. They're not rules. They're not law. There's nothing uh, official being said here, just my experience. And I love that there are so many of you on this other other side of the microphone who are feeling me right now. And by feeling my experience, you get in touch with something in yourself. It never fails to humble me and excite me. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. My question for you is, where do you feel the episode? Take a breath and just notice. What's your body doing right now? Sit with it. Let it speak to you. And let whatever comes up, come up. And your only job is to listen. For all the wisdom you need is right inside of you. To learn more about my work, you can visit holisticlifenavigation.com and sign up for my mailing list. You'll receive a weekly newsletter with specific monthly topics, free resources, and upcoming events. You can also follow me on Instagram. If you like my podcast, please leave a review and share. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next time.